Okay, the goal of this video is to help you understand population pyramids, something we'll be using tomorrow in class, and hopefully you have a basic understanding of what they are, how to read them, and what are the components of a population pyramid to help you be able to apply it and analyze it tomorrow in class. Population pyramids are a visual representation of what a population actually looks like. It's not just a number, an absolute term of you know, a number of people in a given place, but uh, more of a representation of the, what the components of society are. In other words, the gender and age cohorts or groupings throughout um, you would find in a particular place. And so you can see on the left here we have males and on the right females, and then the, the cohorts or the groups by either, sometimes you'll see it by the actual population in thousands or millions, or you might even see it as a percentage of the total population. But that gives the, the width of the bars moving out from the center line. Um, originally they were called population pyramids because in the 1800s most, most countries had populations that looked like pyramids. However, we're going to look at um, in analyzing these uh, for various places and countries. That's not the case anymore. Um, so one of the things that we should be considering and thinking about as we m look to analyze population pyramids are the different sort of bands of, of a population. Uh, the, p the dependencies or the, the dependency ratio, which we'll look at in future um, videos and in class, um, is basically looking at breaking this down, looking at the, the part of the population that is dependent on adults and, and care from others to, to help them um, become productive citizens and also to, for general survival. Um, you have the, the labor force, which is where, per, where the productivity of a society comes from. And then you have the dependents, the older dependents, the elderly, the retired, those that are unable to work anymore. And obviously these range ranges are, are general, but because every society or every country is going to have different life expectancies, have different um, working periods. So when we look at these bands, we might start looking at the different problems or uh, issues a society or country might be facing or planning for uh, based on what their population looks like. So taking a look at these three side-by-side -side comparisons of Kenya, the United States, and Italy, we see v three distinctly different pictures. Um, again, you can see this one is a little bit different. That's got by percent of population. So um, moving away from the center by percentage on, uh, for males and females. In, in Kenya, we have a rapid growth population pyramid. In other words, the wider the base, generally the, the, the more um, dramatic the natural uh, rate of increase in population you're going to see. And you see many more young dependent um, uh, component of, uh, or people in the in population. Um, generally speaking, this is uh, you know, the narrow uh, top it is reflective of a shorter life expectancy. Um, and just a, again, that you're going to have a, a, a youthful, growing population. When you look at the United States, you see a little bit of a, a different shape to it. There's still some resemblance of a pyramid, but you see that bulge in the middle um, because of the baby boomers. Um, and you see that, that range of uh, population and that natural population cycle that's occurring. Um, you also see a wider um, peak at the, po at, the, at the top of the pyramid because of maybe the health care, the life expectancy is much longer uh, in the United States, and we could do some further analysis with that as we move forward. When we look at Italy, however, we start to see a narrower base, so it's no longer really a pyramid, but what we're seeing is that the, the population or the, the, the cohorts of young people in Italy are uh, smaller than the, the adult populations. And what we're saying is as the older people are are start to begin to die off, um, what we're going to see is a, an actual decline in population because they're not being replaced by those um, young people like what you might find in Kenya. So when we look at, again, at the top, we also see factors that would also, you know, factors like um, gender. What is causing females to live longer? Um, so there's all kinds of analysis we can do with population curves or population pyramids. But there are four basic shapes that you should be familiar with and sort of uh, acknowledge and, and sort of understand what does that imply. Um, uh, the rapid growth is going to look like a pyramid, like you saw it with Kenya. Um, stable or stable growth or stability uh, in, in terms of the population, um, absolute population is going to have more vertical sides. It's going to look more rectangular. And then when, you're gonna see, when you start to see like a, a shape like Italy or an inverted pi uh, pyramid, you're, you're likely to see that population decline. And then there's a fourth uh, example that we, we will look at is when you start to see jagged edges or disruptions in the pyramid. Uh, they're, they're, 
you know, unexplainable um, disruptions in the natural flow of those um, bar graphs. We'll look at a couple examples here. Um, this is actually looking at Germany in the historical sense, and you can actually look back in time and see the impact of world events on a population pyramid. So if you look at the, at the peak in uh, the sort of the where it narrows out around the age 70, you actually see the, the birth deficit after, after a result of World War I, or that the, the male population is significantly lower uh, because of all the losses and casualties of World War I. Then you could also look at the, the birth deficit and the baby boom generation of World War II as you move more to the younger part of the population pyramid. And then as you start to see changes in the modern era, you start to see fewer and fewer births, smaller families, and that's reflected by the narrower base in the population pyramid. So there's much more analysis we could do with this, but it's, it's just laden with um, things that you could ask questions if you, were, if you didn't know this information al already. So taking example, um, or one more thought to this, is we can also predict or understand the future. Um, they're not perfect. They don't predict it, but they show trends. And governments and, and uh, economists and uh, you know, geographers are very interested in trying to understand where is a country headed or where is a population headed to best deal with some of the, the resource issues, the scarcity, the, the needs of a population um, as it changes. And so the further out we go, the less, the more we can, unpredictable it is because more variables could be introduced. But um, a good example is to look backwards and while also looking forward. So looking at Japan, post-World War II, 1950, um, you see a very wide population base. As, as Japan became a developed country and became more productive, you saw uh, smaller family sizes, uh, you saw, uh, and you saw a, a growth of a period of, of the Japanese economy that was tremendous through the early part of the 21st century. Um, as we look forward, um, it's estimated that uh, um, there's a point, there's going to be a tipping point in which Jap Japan's population is actually going to begin declining. Um, and I believe it at, at various points it has been already. Um, but you see this is reflected in this narrowing um, pyramid. It's been inverted. In other words, you're going to have a large aging population. And uh, this is going to create what's called a dependency ratio that is going to be very difficult for Dep Japan to deal with that you're going to have very few, uh, much smaller working class to take care of these elderly people. Um, and we can uh, do some more analysis with that again in class. So just as we, if we were to fast forward, you can see it almost moving as we, mo as we move forward in this uh, video. So just looking at this and just seeing the patterns of uh, Japan moving forward to 2050 as the population p cycles through. So hopefully that's a helpful introduction to population pyramids. Uh, bring some questions to class uh, and uh, be prepared to uh, work with them tomorrow.